Sure, are welcome to our Father in heaven. May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our food for the day. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You didn't put that extra ever in there, did you, Karen? Yeah, I know. Creatures are habits. Creatures are habits. So, um, i got to get the thing out of my pocket. There we go. And turn it on. Um, just going to review the lesson from last week. and This is a series called Seeing the Truth. And number 3.3 was openness to God's word. And we looked at John 3, 18, 21. If you weren't here last week, just uh, look at that scripture yourself. And look at how it's portraying. And John looks at Jesus, the Lord, as the light of the world. And he uses a lot throughout John. So I just want you to be aware of that. But as you look at that, look at some more of John. And you'll read into it of, of how God is the light to the world. And, and the world is, in a sense, darkness. It's a type of darkness, but he is the light. It's not the type of reality that this world was created to be. So Jesus is the light of the world. And part of my message was be saturated with the Holy Spirit. And I heard that word this morning, that when you accept Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit comes into you. But you know, a lot of things distract us. The enemy, Satan, the world, and our, even our own flesh. And it's going to try and pull us away from listening to the Holy Spirit. So be saturated. And saturated means to be completely soaked in the Holy Spirit, to allow to wash through you, to, do, to just go all the way over you. And the final word I had for that message was, do not, you do not want to hear these last words. Depart from me. So important. And, and the scriptures will tell you how to not be the one to depart from me. And Jesus talks about it very clearly. So this week, uh, Nancy, I'm not working. I've got it on. Yeah. See the truth. And what this one is, a short message on temptations, double dot, that's life. Or if you want to call it another word, temptation is a part of life. And it comes from 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13. It's not 112, but it's 12 through 13. Oh, I went the wrong way. Oh, maybe I, oh, maybe I got turned the wrong way, Nancy. Here we go. Oh, now I'm making her. All right. <laughs> Verse 12. If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. Amen. The temptations in your life, it doesn't say when the temptations come along, it says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can take, more than you can stand, more that will, over, that will not overcome you. When you are tempted, He, God, will show you a way out so that you and I can endure. So, it's essential that each one of us realize that temptation is going to be a part of our lives. It's going to be present as long as we live on this planet that we call Earth. Trying to deny its existence is like trying to deny gravity. Everybody here, I bet you've heard it jump up now. You are going to come down. You can say all you want. There is no gravity. I don't, gravity doesn't have an impact over me. Guess what? You jump up, you're going to go down. So it is with temptation. Even if you decide not to turn on the TV or the radio or heaven forbid, your cell phone. Temptation is, real, is as real as gravity. It exists. The temptation can come from the outside, the world, TV, again, the cell phone, or can come on social interactions, the workplace, the marketplace, maybe even within your family. It can also come from the inside, internal, our thoughts, our words, our desires, our action, our mind, and even our own heart. 
can try to deceive us. It's part of the sin nature that we picked up when Adam sinned. Temptation is a part of the human condition each person is born with and comes into when they're on this earth. I have a statement. If you think you are beyond the reach of temptation, you are not seeing the truth. The truth is temptation is there. Just a reminder for all of us, especially in this world today, the Word of God, the Bible, the truth, the scriptures, has been written, not written in vain. It's there for each one of us. It wasn't written just to entertain us. It wasn't written by some, it was written by men, but they were all under the inspiration, in, in, inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And they wrote it for each one of us, for every generation, for every year, every time the, earth, or the society changes, it was written for us. Every word written and recorded in this book has a purpose for each one of us. It was written until the final days of this earth are complete. You and I and anyone who wants to follow Jesus needs to know it is our duty as a follower to learn from the Word of God and seek the wisdom that's in there. I'm going to say that again. As a follower, it is your duty to read the Word of God, to listen to it, to dwell on it, to be saturated with it through the Holy Spirit. And then the wisdom that's written down for it. It's kind of like joining 4-H or FFA or uh, some sort of club. You join it, but you don't look at the manual. You don't look at the book. Are you really a member? You're just following along. But if you want to be a true follower of the Lord, you grab a hold of this word in whatever version and seek different versions. Uh, go to Bible Gateway on the computer and use that. There's lots of ways to look at the word. And when you read, you know, people that write about the word, read it, but look, go back to the word and see what does this word, does it say it that way or is it twisted a little bit? It's all for our duty to do that. How do we overcome this battle with temptation? It is key that instead of looking within ourselves, and even sometimes from other men and women who seem to know that they are speaking the word, we need to speak, we need to search the word ourselves. Wisdom and truth are present in the word. If we look carefully at the scripture, we will find all kinds of examples of others that have had to deal with temptation and how they sought the Lord. I think of King David. He was kind of, did a lot of stuff, didn't he? Adultery? Murder? God even came to someone who did murder, actually, in the lineage of Jesus. King David's involved with it. How about Peter? How many times he put his foot in his mouth? Been there, done that? Many times. Or how about denying Jesus three times, at least that we know of, that was written in the scripture, that Jesus was denied by Peter. But Peter sought out reconciliation with Jesus. Jesus actually came to him. There were two people that denied Jesus that night. Remember that. Peter and Judas. Judas went another route. He could have been reconciled. could have been forgiven. But he did. Peter did. Peter felt bad. And each time Jesus says, do you love me? He used a stronger word each time. Others have been tempted the same way and have overcome. God will not tempt you past your strength. I always rely on that scripture. I do personally. Because there's a lot of temptations that come along. And that I know that God, he knows what my strength are. And I'm not going to do it with my own strength. I'm going to do it with God's strength. But he's not going to put me past the point of which I can be tempted. You know, even Doubting e. Thomas, he in a sense was tempted. Tempted not to believe. I don't see Jesus. I didn't see him. You guys did, but I didn't. I need to see him. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to teach and to speak within each one of us and direct us what to read in the scriptures. And these people, as we've read, have had a breakthrough. King David, Peter, Thomas, they've all had breakthroughs. Not only is God wise, he is also faithful. He will only make the temptations, the burdens, the trials, no more than what we can handle. 
It is like working out. You need to know how much you can lift. Otherwise, you won't be walking out of this, out of the uh, fitness center or out of your home if you have one. I'm very bad at that. I will go to the Y and I'll say, oh, I can do 120 pounds. Yeah, I can. And I'll do my 3 times 10, 30 of them. Guess what? I'm really stiff. I'm not going to do that again. So I've learned to start with lighter weights and do it. But God will not tempt you more than you can do. Don, yes. He doesn't tempt us. He tests us. Tests us. Okay. Yeah. Well, not, yeah, God doesn't tempt us. We go through temptations, right. but he, he tests us. Tests us. Yeah, test us. That's right. God knows what we can bear, and God will provide a way of escape. God will give you a way out of the trial, or at least out of the illness, that is the effects of the trial. We need to allow him to come alongside of us, and we hang on to him. We say, I can't do this. I need to have you do it, Lord. Whether the world is smiling at you or frowning at you, it is still an enemy that we have to deal with. It is an enemy to the true word of God. You and I are called to overcome this world by staying true to the word and to his truth. As I said earlier, not only is temptation all around us, temptation is within us. Temptation is external, temptation is internal. James 1, to 1 verse 14, temptation comes from our own desires when it entices and drags us away. So you can't escape the external desires. You need to live with the destructive desires that will try and rise up within yourself. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God will give you a new nature. This new nature comes from the Holy Spirit and will guide you. But you still have some of your old human weaknesses present. They will not disappear. They will not disappear entirely in this age that we live in. The Holy Spirit will work within you. And as you listen and act, the temptation can be dealt with with greater authority and with greater strength because of the Holy Spirit and what he's done. Temptations will not magically disappear. So let us face reality. Temptations will not totally go away. The temptations come within, will still be present. But seeing the truth that we can avoid falling under temptation's power through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we need to keep our eyes wide open and our ears hearing what is being said by the Holy Spirit so we can overcome the lies that come across our path. The fear of the Lord in our hearts will be our shield of safety. Fear of the Lord, Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. To fear the Lord means to acknowledge that God needs to be the one who is, re who is re revered, reverence. To be looked at with awe, yet he is a loving God. As we see him, we feel the sense of serving the one who controls this universe, who controls that comet we can watch for a little while. And not least of all, we worship him with our hearts and minds in all that we do, everything that we do. We worship him through our activities of what we're doing, our thoughts. It is having a continuous, continuous awesomeness that we are in the presence of holiness of God's holiness. Everything we do, every motive, every thought, every word, and every action is open before him and will be judged by the Almighty. He is the one who saved and he is the one who is the way of redemption that is through his son, Jesus Christ. No other way. There are benefits of fearing the Lord. Proverbs 2, 20, or 22.4. By humili humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. It is one of the most valuable treasures that we can gain, the fear of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are God. Where the temptations that come across our path, and they're not from you, they're from the world, from within are not more than we can stand. Lord, I thank you for that. 
And as you said in Proverbs, there are benefits that we will live a life that is honoring to you. Other people will see that. So Lord, I thank you for this son that you gave to us, that died for us, shed his blood, that we may have life. And as we're going to follow up with communion, that Jesus shed his blood for each one of us, that we might have his life, his forgiveness. And as we get ready for communion, we're going to take some time. And we need to search our own hearts for forgiveness and forgiving others, because that will hold us back. So Lord, just thank you. And if you're watching online, uh, we're going to stop this for communion. But communion uh, is a time when you can, as a group or as a group, we can share in the body of Christ, which represents the bread. And then the uh, wine or grape juice is the blood of Jesus Christ. And he shed sins for us. We thank you, Lord. Amen.